Hey everybody, it's me, Mike Thompson at Epic Flight Academy. Check out this book, Telling is Not Teaching. Try to find it at Amazon.com. Now, let's continue our discussion of aerodynamics talking about the force of weight. Weight acts vertically through the center of gravity on the airplane. Remember when we talk about weight, it's not just the weight of the physical airplane, baggage, fuel, passengers, etc. Weight is all of the downward acting forces on the airplane. Now, thrust works on Newton's second law. Remember Newton's second law, force is equal to the change in momentum per change in time. In other words, force equals mass times acceleration. So when we talk about thrusting force, it's mass times acceleration. It also works in conjunction with Newton's third law. Newton's third law says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The fourth and final force that we want to talk about is the drag force. Working opposite thrust, dragging the aircraft back. When we talk about drag, we think of it in two types. There's parasite drag and there's induced drag. Let's take them one at a time. Parasite drag. Parasite drag has three types. The first is form drag. Form drag is a turbulent weight caused by a wake caused by separation of airflow from the surface of, an, of, of a structure. All right, let's simplify that. Think of things like the antenna mounted to the airplane. Um, th these cause form drag. The second one is interference drag. Interference drag is when currents of air flowing over the airplane is interrupted where two parts of the aircraft meet. A good example of that, where the wing root meets the fuselage. Where those meet, they interrupt that airflow, that causes drag, that's called interference drag. And then finally, the third type of parasite drag is skin friction drag. And this is really just the relative wind flowing over the skin of the airplane. Now, we can't see it with our naked eye, but at a microscopic level, there's a surface roughness in this aircraft structure and as the air flows past it that causes drag. That's skin friction drag. So parasite drag, three types. Form, interference, skin friction. Well what was the second type of drag? The second type was induced drag. Now induced drag is interesting. It is produced by the production of lift. What's lift? Lift is the force created by the angle between the cord line and the relative wind. The drag caused by the production of this force is called induced drag. The creation of that lifting force induces this drag. The higher the angle of attack, the greater the induced drag. The smaller the angle of attack, the less the induced drag. So, take a look at this airfoil. Large angle of attack, large amounts of induced drag. Remember, we're flying at higher angles of attack at slower air speeds in order to make the same amount of lift. Take a look at this airfoil. A smaller angle of attack, there's less induced drag. We're flying at a higher airspeed and can produce the same amount of lift. So, slower airspeed, 
larger angle of attack, more induced drag. Faster airspeed, smaller angle of attack, less induced drag. Now that brings us to the drag curve. This is a fairly simple curve to understand. We just have to visualize two axes. The vertical axis is the total amount of drag. This horizontal axis is how fast the aircraft is moving. So my speed is increasing as we move from left to right. Now think about parasite drag. As the aircraft moves faster, there's more air resistance, parasite drag goes up. Now remember with induced drag, it increases when the angle of attack is larger, but recall the angle of attack is larger at slower speeds. So you see this curve where the speeds are low, the induced drag is high, and as the speed goes up, induced drag comes down. Now, the aircraft can't separate the two types of drag. The aircraft is actually responding to both parasite and induced drag combined into what we call the total drag curve. The blue line here represents the total drag curve. So if you could imagine taking the parasite and induced lines here and combining them, you'd get the blue curve. Notice how the blue curve starts high because at slow speeds induced drag is high. The blue curve ends high because at high speeds parasite drag is high. Well, look how this blue curve dips in the middle. At some point, we have minimum drag on that airplane for a given airspeed. That is the total drag curve. Now, one final topic to talk about in aerodynamics is a concept called ground effect. When the aircraft is moving through the air, the relative wind is rushing over the aircraft. It's rushing over both of the wings. It's brushing, rushing over the entire airframe, the entire structure. And that whole aircraft is creating a downwash effect. The wind around the wings is also creating low pressure on top high pressure on bottom as a result of Bernoulli's effect that we talked about earlier. Now if we get out to the wing tip, we can see that high pressure on the bottom wants to flow around to the low pressure on the top. Now keep those two things in mind, the downwash created by the entire aircraft itself and the wind around the wingtips wanting to flow from high pressure to low pressure. When we bring that aircraft down close to the surface, any hard surface like, oh, how about a runway? That hard surface will dissipate that downwash and dissipate the airflow around those wingtips. And the dissipation of that airflow reduces the total drag. At the same time, when that downwash is dissipated, the relative wind flattens a little bit over the top of this airfoil, and the lifting force, which is perpendicular to the relative wind, shifts slightly forward. A combination of all of these effects means less drag close to the ground. For the same airspeed, the airplane is operating with less drag. The airplane will float. Now, pilots sometimes talk about uh, the airplane floating on a cushion of air. 
Well, there is no actual cushion of air, but this reduction in total drag, the reduction of the downwash, the reduction of the wingtip vortices, and this lift vector moving slightly forward, all make it feel as though the aircraft were on a cushion of air. There really is no cushion, it just floats. Now, we cannot escape ground effect, so ground effect is something we take into consideration when we land the aircraft. Your flight instructor will work with you on this. So here's a, re uh, here's a couple of review questions for the aerodynamics portion of this course. Uh, how would you define the force of weight? What are the two types of drag? What are a couple of factors that come into play when we talk about ground effect? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up aerodynamics. We'll see you for the next lesson.